Have you ever walked into a room and thought, I don't belong here? Or looked around at a room full of people and thought, I wish I can get my life on track like everyone else? I've been there too. I've had that awkward feeling, and I wanted to turn right around and walk out of the room. It's not a good feeling when it's like you're the odd one out, the only one. Maybe you feel like you're the only person who didn't watch the hit series season finale last night, or the only person who's not excited about the upcoming football game, or maybe you feel like you're the only person who is balancing a job and caring for an aging parent, or maybe you feel like you're the only person who's trying to keep up with school and a chronic illness. And since you are so sure that you're the only one who doesn't have it together, the only one who doesn't fit in, you fake it. You try to be normal because everyone else is. Just blend in and hope that nobody notices that you're different. Today, I want to share my not so normal story with you in the hopes that you can see the things that make us apart that can make each of us different and special, that can create better communities and make each of us stronger. Don't be normal. Normal is boring. Be extraordinary. I've learned in my 17 years that everyone has been touched by some sort of burden. Some you can see, but others you can't. No matter how put together people look, you never want to know what they might be dealing with because we have all been there. So you have to learn to be accepting of yourself as you are and try to better yourself each and every day. And accepting myself came down to three things for me. And these things can help you on your journey as well. Find yourself, find your community, and find your voice. And once you find those three things, you'll be well on your way to shattering the boxes that we put ourselves in and embracing our inner odd man out. My name is Ashley Murphy, and I'm 17 years old and in grade 11. And if you ran into me at school or at the mall, you'd see a pretty normal teenager. I like to hang out with my friends, love movies and music. I like to watch funny videos online and have my favorite YouTubers and bands. But there's probably a not-so-normal thing that you wouldn't guess just by looking at me. I'm HIV positive. I acquired it from my late birth mother and have been living with HIV my whole life. My birth mother was an addict, and although she cared for me and loved me, her addictions made it impossible for her to look after me. So at six weeks old, my weight dropped to three pounds, 10 ounces, and Children's Aid rushed me to sick kids to be assessed by their doctors, who could see I was critically ill. I was in severe respiratory distress, and the doctors look at my, took a chest x-ray and found that I had PC pneumonia and all four lobes of my lungs which is the type of pneumonia with people with compromised immune systems, or HIV and AIDS. So they did a blood test and found out that I had full-blown AIDS. The team at SickKids put me into a medically induced coma and in order to give my tiny body a chance to heal. I was in a coma in the neonatal intensive care unit for three and a half months, hooked up to a respirator. Finally, at six months of age, I could breathe on my own but I was still very fragile. I only weighed eight pounds, three ounces, and was considered terminally ill. So Children's Aid started looking for a foster family that would take me for palliative care. After more than 200 calls and rejections, they finally got to my mom, who said yes, and I'll forever be grateful that she did. They told my adoptive parents that I only had weeks to live. But clearly, I had other plans. My family loved me, cared for me, and prayed for me. And as a result, I kept getting stronger. I surprised everyone by reaching milestones like crawling, walking, and talking. People made a lot of assumptions about what my life would be like and what I would be able to do. Just like how people have probably made assumptions about you. But I challenged those assumptions right out of the gate. The human spirit is a remarkable thing. When I was seven years old, 
my parents sat me down and told me that I had HIV. And they told me not to tell anyone. But I didn't understand why. I hadn't done anything wrong. So I started telling everyone. It didn't seem like a big deal to me. One boy, upon learning that his friend had HIV, said, cool, I'm lactose intolerant. But not everyone was so cool about it. I learned the hard way what stigma meant. And when people are uninformed, they can be hurtful, and their words can be hurtful. When I was little, I was banned from playing with neighborhood kids, almost uninvited to a sleepover party when I was seven. And just last year, one of my friend's parents told them to give me disposable plates, cups, and utensils when I visited. But my friends had educated themselves and knew what the facts were, and they corrected their parents' misconceptions. Education is the key to fighting stigma. So, let me give you a few facts. HIV is a virus that is contracted mainly through bodily fluids, birth, or blood. If not treated, HIV can develop into full-blown AIDS, which it can be deadly. But if you take your medications for HIV, you could live a long and healthy life. For me, right now, my viral load is undetectable, which means that when the doctors test my blood, they don't find HIV. I am not cured of HIV, but my illness is controlled. So I can marry, have children of my own, and a partner, and not worry about contracting, giving them my disease. As long as I stick to my medication routine, I should be fine. But the medicines can be hard on your body, and the side effects that I go through are tough. And I'd prefer a cure, but for right now, I'll keep taking my medication. During my lifetime, I've had several times when my health was very poor. But I've also been really healthy as well. And when I get the cold or the flu, it takes me a lot longer to get over than most people. And I had a feeding tube when I was nine years old that was placed into my abdomen. But now, people with HIV can live into their 70s, much longer than the one month I was given 17 years ago. Some people think in Canada that HIV isn't a real problem. But actually, HIV is on the rise in Canada in youth between 15 to 29 years of age, which is why it is so important that everyone gets educated and that we end the stigma surrounding HIV. I personally know hundreds of youth in Canada with HIV, but they choose to keep it a secret. And secrets can be deadly. I've had a friend who had to sell their house and move due to the bullying and discrimination they face in their communities. Sometimes people treat me differently based on incorrect information that they have about people living with HIV. Or they think that I have HIV, they see that I have it, and they think that that's all to me. They don't think of me as being a sister, or student, or volunteer. And they don't ask me about being a singer, or musician, or what I'm hoping to do after I graduate. But, what I'm, but when I talk about finding myself, I talk about finding all the different pieces of me that come together to make me the full package, and realizing that everyone else is struggling to figure this out too. And knowing that these different parts of our identity make us special. One of my main sources of support has been my big family. Yep, check out that family photo. There are 10 kids in my family, but I also have seven biological siblings as well. We're all different races, religions, and we come from different backgrounds. We all like to do different things in our spare time. Some of us like to listen to music, hang out with our friends, or watch TV. Some of us are eco-warriors, while others litter. Some are partiers, while others are quiet. Most of us have special needs. Most of us have either lost one or both of our birth parents. And most of us have family members who should have been cherished, who should have cherished and loved us. And these similarities bonded us all in a way that most families don't get to experience. We came to this family one way or another, needing someone to have our back. And that's our family motto. 
I've got your back. We've all learned it from our parents, who have been willing to support us from the minute we were in their care. Whether they were helping us with their homework or taking us to sports and plays, my parents have, been having, have had our backs the whole way. They showed each of us love, even when we didn't make it easy for them. Their example met that when the 10 of us headed off to school, we stood together. It also helped to come home to a house full of people when you had a tough day, because you knew that they had been through those rough days as well. My family might look different than yours. It might be bigger. But wherever you find family, I hope that you have people that will find your back, will have your back. And this could be in a club you joined, or it could be at a summer camp, which is where I found my community. And this is Camp Moomba. Here, everyone is affected by HIV. Everyone. So I didn't have to worry about what the whispers were for that were coming behind my back and wondering why I was taking medication. Here, HIV was normal. The medicine that prevents children being born with HIV has been available since before I was born. And yet, almost 700 babies are born with HIV every day. 700 a day. That's 240,000 a year. And that makes 7.5 million babies born after me with HIV. And it makes me angry to know that people are still contracting HIV and dying when they don't have to. I felt like I needed to do more to help. I saw a lot of people facing the destruction of stigma, people with mental health issues, living in fear, or victims of bullying. Stigma makes people feel isolated and alone. It puts up walls in our communities when we should feel safe and where we should be able to not keep secrets and to tell anyone anything. Stigma is literally killing people. Then I saw Magic Johnson, who was an NBA superstar. He was a giant in the sport. But he, really, he found out that he had HIV before the 1991-92 season. And instead of keeping his diagnosis a secret, Magic Johnson announced it at a press conference. And he has, since, he has since gone on to be a passionate HIV AIDS activist. I knew that I could make a difference too. And my family loves to volunteer and pay it forward. So at the age of 10, I started publicly speaking at charity fundraisers and organizations like Variety Village, the Teresa Group, and the Hospital for Sick Children. I started getting profiled by TV shows and magazines asking me about what it was like growing up HIV positive. I was helping to raise money to improve research with HIV. I had found my voice. And then one day, I got an invitation to speak to a whole big, whole big crowd. The team at We Day invited me to join them on their North American tour. This series of events celebrates the change that youth have to change the world through people coming together by activists and celebrities. You can't buy a ticket to We Day. You earn it through local volunteering and service. I was both excited and nervous. It meant that a lot of people were going to see that I had HIV all at once. And my school was live streaming it in their main lobby. There was going to be 16,500 kids who are going to see my not so normal. A lot of people were going to find out that I had HIV. I walked on stage and the audience was quiet. But when I finished, the audience cheered and gave me a standing ovation. But what happened next was even better. The video of me speaking ended up online. And I started hearing from people all over the world who had saw my video and encouraged me to keep going. And I also had people who had reached out to me and told me that they were HIV positive. And they used my videos to break down the barriers of HIV and disclose to one of their friends. 
I have spoken to more than over 200,000 youth this year and have traveled to Africa and Europe, sharing my story. I've shared the stage with Quaker Mandela and Martin Luther King III, and have met celebrities like Selena Gomez, Shawn Mendes, and Macklemore. At 16, I traveled to Geneva, Switzerland, and addressed the UN AIDS Gala, speaking to royalty and heads of state, and learned that our voices are powerful. I'm hoping that my words today will inspire you to move forward in your journey. First, find yourself. Find, about, find what you deeply care about. Second, find your community. Find those who will accept your wonderful self and your awful self. Because trust me, we all have that side. Find people that will have your back no matter what. Find your voice. Stand up and share your story or ideas with others. Don't be ashamed of what makes you unique. That's what makes you interesting. Rock your differences. Own them and be you. Thank you.